Hello and welcome and welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. I'm here in Everton Park, North Liverpool, with its magnificent views. The area just to the north of the city centre, by Scotland Road, is a fascinating case study in urban change. At Bramley Moor Dock, the new stadium is nearing completion, and nearby there are some apartment developments in progress, though others are taking their time. How long before post-industrial turns into vibrant 21st century residential. The dominant landmark in Liverpool city centre is Radio City Tower, and over to the right, the tall pointed tower of the municipal buildings, now the municipal hotel and spa. We can see the twin clock towers of the Liver building with its Liver birds, then the Unity building with its rectangular pod on the top. Beetham West Tower is the tallest building in Liverpool, to its right the Lexington and one Prince's Dock. Alexandra Tower is the one with the sloping roof. We can see the ventilation towers of the 1971 Kingsway Tunnel on both sides of the river, with the diagonal shape at the base. Further up on the world side of the river is Wallasey Town Hall. The large white building on the horizon is residential tower block Liscard House. The very large rectangular structure is the tobacco warehouse. The two cranes belong to a big new canal side development. We'll look at both later. Then we have the largest and most impressive construction project in Liverpool, the new Everton Football Stadium. In the distance, on the hilltop, is the Catholic Church of Saints Peter and Paul and Saint Philomena, and much closer, with its eight pinnacles, Saint Anthony's Catholic Church on Scotland Road, just near the old house of legendary singer Scylla Black. The view leads us further into the Liverpool docks, with its wind turbines, cranes and storage tanks. In the 19th century, a whole city district was built on this hill and the area below it, known as Scotland Road or Scotty Road. It was torn down in the 1960s, residents rehoused, tower blocks built, but later demolished to reveal this incredible panoramic view from Everton Park. Sadly, the park is in a rather poor state, with discarded rubbish everywhere. Walls, steps and footways are in need of renovation. The history of this district is documented in an excellent book, The Lost Tribe of Everton and Scotty Road by Ken Rogers. We are on today's Scotland Road by St Anthony's Church. As a child, I loved Scylla Black, especially her Liverpool lullaby. She lived just up here on the left, but the buildings have gone. What's there today? A McDonald's. We fly over to the west now, over low-rise residential and, beyond the railway line, commercial areas and the empty central docks area. And we are driving in a northerly direction along Regent Road. We're just passing the Invisible Wind Factory, where I saw Mick Head and the Red Elastic Band, Liverpool's finest. Check him out, link below. On the right is the gigantic tobacco warehouse, and on the left, the new Everton Bramley Moor Stadium. This building has distinctive curves, like a footballer's sports car. It was originally designed by Mies Architects, but BDP Pattern Architects were commissioned to take it over. I'm sure this project is going to be a massive catalyst for development in the northern part of Liverpool. It's constructed on top of the Grade 2 listed Bramley Moor Dock, and if needed, it can be removed in the future to reveal the original dock underneath. This project, with all its regeneration benefits, was a reason why UNESCO decided to remove their World Heritage title from Liverpool. So what's the area around the new stadium going to look like when it's complete? Keep watching Aidan Eyewitness. To its south is the planned district Central Docks, part of Liverpool Waters, a major project by Peel Holdings. Here are the boards on Jesse Hartley Way. Central Docks, it says, an exciting residential, business, entertainment and leisure district at Liverpool Waters. Coming soon. But I took those pictures in August 2021. Two and a half years later, no buildings have appeared. Lower down? we can see the Isle of Man ferry terminal nearing completion. And nearby, the steel skeleton of a new building. What is it? Post a comment if you know. The former North Warehouse is now the Titanic Hotel. 
and on the south side of Stanley Dock is the tobacco warehouse. After standing derelict for years, it's being converted into a residential building. The apartments are in a duplex mezzanine layout with windows on two levels. The Stanley Dock tobacco warehouse was begun in 1900 and completed in 1901. It's grade two listed and is the biggest brick warehouse in the world. At the north end of Prince's Dock is Alexandra Tower, completed in 2007. Let's check out the new building that's under construction. I'm tracking its progress. It's called Patagonia Place. Since my last capture two months ago, it looks like they've completed two and a half stories. The central core has advanced by a similar amount. I'll keep tracking it until it reaches completion just below the height of the crane. It will be 95 meters, 312 feet, 31 floors. We're now on the busy Leeds Street on the northern edge of the city center, passing the abandoned Infinity Waters project with its three tall towers. Due to various problems with the developer, it was abandoned. Another developer took over, but I can see no activity on the site as yet. But further up Leeds Street, there is a new proposed development entitled The Gateway. Similar to Infinity, it has narrow towers, though not as high. Developers are Legacy. The scheme has 656 one, two and three bedroom luxury apartments across four tower blocks. I understand the project has not yet been given the official go-ahead. This area has been dubbed the Northern Quarter, where have I heard that before? Interesting how areas can be branded and take on an identity of their own. We also have, just round here, the Pump Fields District, named after the L-shaped Pump Fields Road. So, how is this location going to look in a few years? Well, here's how it looked until recently. Dave's Motors, I wonder where they're based now. Just behind this site, Bastion Point is already in progress. Slowly, step by step, this area is moving towards that idyllic contemporary residential district we see in all the visualizations. The signs say, don't miss out, 69 luxury apartments with amazing views across Liverpool. Yes, I'm sure they will be. Luxury two and three bed apartments in the heart of Liverpool. Well, Matthew Street is about a 17 minute walk from here. At the end of the busy Lead Street, we turn back onto Scotland Road and pass Westminster Park, a prestigious project I featured previously. This is how it was intended to look, but as we can see, only one of the blocks has been completed. Just a stone's throw from Westminster Park and just to the rear of Bastion Point is this empty site. Last year, the boards showed plans for a new residential development named Kingsway Square. Today, the boards have been removed. The site is empty. Looks like it was abandoned before it even started. What's happening here? On the positive side though, not far from here, a major residential project is well advanced and we'll see it in a while. I walked up across the bridge to the north side of the Kingsway Tunnel approach to find this striking but derelict Edwardian tenement complex called Eldon Grove. It's Grade 2 listed and is an early example of council housing. It was opened in 1912 by the Countess of Derby, a year after the Liver Building. Ah, oh, those were the days. But sometime in the not too distant past, it was abandoned and it's been left an empty, rotting shell since then. Can you just imagine what this would look like if it was completely renovated, full of character and history? But it's its future is uncertain. Renovation plans have fallen through. Local residents are frustrated with a lack of progress. Some say better for it to be demolished. It's a shame. What went wrong? It's important to be aware though that up here in this part of Liverpool there are lots of low-rise housing developments with pleasant streets. We can see them from this Google Earth view. They're on the east side of the railway line and just to the west of the railway viaduct overlooking the famous Stanley Flight of Locks is a major residential project named Hartley Locks. It's by Tourist Developments. Let's compare it to how it looked when I visited in April 2023. It's great to see construction in progress and they've achieved a lot in just nine months. It would be great to have a Mersey rail station here to serve Hartley Locks and the new stadium, which is only a five minute walk away. It's a great location by those attractive and historic locks that link up with the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. The cost of the project is £52 million. Architects Tim Groom and Partners. There will be 185 apartments and 10 townhouses. It's said to sustain 350 construction jobs on the site. The Stanley Lock Flight is Grade 2 listed and was built in 1848. Designed by Jesse Hartley. And there's one of the new 777 class trains heading maybe to Headbolt Lane, which I featured in a previous video. It won't be long before this project will be fully occupied by lots of new residents. It will radically alter the face of this part of the city. And as we look above over 
over the tobacco warehouse, we can hopefully look forward to the rest of the Liverpool Waters central docks being completed. But how long is it going to take for the area to turn from a post-industrial, part residential area to a desirable and attractive, state-of-the-art, vibrant new quarter in the great city of Liverpool? Keep watching Aidan Eyewitness and I'll do my best to capture snapshots as a new Liverpool gradually takes shape. One of my motivations is to record locations before new construction and if possible the building that was there before. An impossible task for one person. I aim to build a representative sample, a mosaic of the city as it develops. If you think you can help me out, then please donate to www.buymeacoffee.com aid an eyewitness. And if you live in a tall building on an upper floor, I have a special request. See below in the description. If you found this video interesting, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and share with others. And post a comment if you have any opinions, insider information or tip-offs. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Liverpool.